It's Friday. Tis Friday. Start off with a little gunship. Where do we go from here? How do you go higher from here? So tonight we are closing out another great week. Another great week I had hanging out with you. We had great guests. We had good conversation. Should be more of that tonight with our returning guest, Sam Tripoli. He'll be on with us in a little bit. Matt should be jumping in at some point too. So in the meantime, it's just you and I. So I want to talk about zombie parasites. I saw, you probably have seen some of these uh, these videos and these articles about the uh, the fungi the fungus that that takes over living organisms like insects and stuff like that and rots the insect away to where there's almost nothing left of the body it's pretty much dead there's nothing left of it but it's still walking it's a zombie so obviously obviously it's possible to do with anything including humans and we already know based on what was uh, what was uh, released to the public in those those little presentations at West Point. We already know that they can control a human being on a cellular level, so... But this is so much more... zombie story-ish zombie. Like, we're talking about a rotted, dead, undead thing. And it's being kept alive by some fungus. Well, what if the fungus is just a... an organic kind of transmitter between some other kind of a brain? A zombie brain. These are things that nobody should have to be bothered with. But, of course, we are. So we have to talk about that tonight. Uh, I also want to talk about Antarctica because when Sam Tripoli was on Rogan weeks ago, he, he, he got a lot of people excited that Rogan felt like the old program again where they were talking about conspiracies and weird things. And I was surprised to hear that uh, the, a lot of people in the room did not know anything about Operation High Jump. So we have, I want to talk to him about that a little bit too. And I set aside a really great presentation that uh, Robert Sepper did on the Vril and secret uh, space programs and high jump, Admiral Byrd, all that stuff. And I, um, I set it aside either for tonight after the show, if the guys at the network use it. And if they don't, then I'll have it in the Sunday night lineup for when I curate the show for Frank's picks and and the the night owl stuff. Anyway, it's been a great great week and I can't wait to talk about all that and more because it's Friday. So that means that we have a little bit more lighthearted things. I have some jokes. I have some Babylon B. I have a new parody, a new parody sort a source of parody news, which obviously these days is actually not even parody. It just means Somebody's very de- saying the truth in a very deadpan way, but uh, I have a new new source I want to introduce you to, and then I have two clips from the the Alex Jones trial, the the, the the latest trial, because like Donald Trump, they just can't let it go, and it is so embarrassing, the level of performance coming out of the prosecution, and it's just embarrassing. The whole production is very embarrassing. Um, that's just what it obviously is very serious if if all that em, embarrassing stuff is focused in on you to try to destroy you but um from an objective stamp from this you know outside looking in standpoint wow what a nightmare of a production that is anywho uh matt just got into the studio what's going on matt how you feeling hello francis how's the uh, how's the kitten she's doing well She's I, growing. She's becoming sweeter. Sweeter, you say? <sighs> yeah, she would always bite and scratch. Well, you you sent us a picture of her this morning sitting on your shoulder, mm-hmm. so that was very nice. She looks like she has uh, she has a little bit more bearings of where she is and what she's doing now. Yeah, I think she started doing that because my girlfriend's uh, other cat it would jump on my back and nurse. Ah, it's a like three-year-old cat that nurses. Gotcha. Understood. All right. Well, I hope you start producing, start lactating. Uh, still not. He nurses on plastic bags too. Oh, 
He's probably desperate. <laughs> He's desperate. Wants just needs something. Well, anyway, here we are. We're just hanging out. Got a little bit of time. Oh, also, if you want a little bit more news and headlines and banter, then please check out this morning's recording that I did with Tracy for Dark to Light. It can be found on RadioInfluence.com or wherever else you get your podcasts. Uh, a th- big thank you to Secret Nature CBD because uh, I just had a little Fuji sativa CBD pre-roll just to relax and uh, get into the mood here. The it conversation was very lovely when I walked in. Doesn't actually. it smell it fragrant? Like, what did you say it was called? It's it's called Fuji. Because it actually like did smell like Hawaii in here. Although is Fuji in Hawaii? I could be tonight. No Fiji? Fuji. Fiji. Am I thinking you're, of Fiji. You're thinking about Fiji, it's and I don't even country. think that is Hawaii. Is that Hawaii? Fiji. Uh, that might be. I don't know. No, no. Fuji, Fiji Islands is its own thing. Fuji is. Maybe we should is, take over the Fiji is Islands. Japan. Yeah, we should definitely take it from them. They're not using it right now. Where is Fiji? Let's see here. No, it gives me the uh, gives me the bearings, the longitude and the latitude. Actually, gave me the coordinates. <sighs> Give me the coordinates. Uh, let's see. It's an archipelago in the Oceania region, Southern Pacific Ocean. It's called the Republic of Fiji officially. So I think it's its own thing. No, oh, maybe. Wait, wait. Th- did I just see a British flag? Well, yeah. I think Britain I just saw controlled the, everything. The Union Jack. Britain enslaved the entire world, but for whatever reason, slavery is... It's still just around. the United States thing now. Well, yeah, I know. I know. It's just the you know, old old habits, as they say. Well, yeah, so it's not Fiji. It's Fuji, and I believe Fuji is Japan. They got they got Mount Fuji out there, or at least that's yeah. what I think so because of that uh, restaurant. The restaurant. Fuji and, Mountain chain. Yeah. I've eaten at a couple of Fuji Mountains. <laughs> so that, that's my knowledge of Japan. All right, uh, what else do we have? Just a couple, okay, let's just jump into our grab bag because there's a couple things here I know Matt's going to like. All right, first one up, let me get this on the screen. Where the hell am I? Oh, there you go. Okay, first one up is Elon Musk faces skeptics as Tesla gets ready to unveil Optimus Robot. It's an Optimus Robot. It's Are you ready? Optimus Prime. San Francisco Tesla chief executive Elon Musk blamed over-reliance on factory robots for sending the electric car maker to production hell four years ago, saying humans were better at certain jobs. My, how times have changed. Musk's Texas company now is floating ambitious plans to deploy thousands of humanoid robots known as Tesla Bot or Optimus within its factories, expanding eventually to millions around the world, according to job postings. Buzz is building within the company as Tesla is having more internal meetings on robots, a person familiar with the matter says. There's going to be so many of these optimists running around yeah. with, with guns <clears throat> or just strangling people. We need one to become like half human, so it would be like Dune, like um, Omnius, Omnius Prime. From the Butlerian Jihad. Omnius Trump. You remember that? That's, yeah, that got banned. That My got banned on got YouTube. Banned. Now I have another on. one. I'm just waiting to a little more towards uh, the election to start. Because I'm going to get banned again. Uh, yeah, well, that's the whole point of election time is getting banned on social media. Yeah. <laughs> that's all, it's, it's, a new, it's a new American pastime. Yeah, I've been banned on Twitter two or three times. Facebook. Took my shit down, banned from editing on Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, I, I know the editing. That's funny. What were you last editing on Wikipedia, real quick? Uh, like the Hillary Clinton bio, Bill Clinton, uh, just anyone, uh, the, the, Ralph Nader, anyone. Did you what, did you put like a like a Kuru infection date? A what? Kuru. What the fuck is that? It's a, we'll talk about it later. It's a disease you get for eating human brains. I think. Oh, I thought you get HIV from that. Well, I oh, mean, that's I, monkey brains. Well, I, I guess you can get uh, HIV uh, supposedly from anything, as long as there's, you know, yeah. there's, there's a little matter on. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> HIV is always around. The it's, corner. Al- it's always around the corner. You never know. Longer term, Musk said that uh, at a TED talk, robots could be used in homes, making dinner, mowing the lawn, slapping your wife's ass. This is not good. Even becoming a buddy or a cat girl sex partner. What? 
The robot business eventually may be worth more than Tesla's car revenue, according to Musk, who is now touting a vision for the company that goes well beyond making self-driving electric vehicles. So uh, there you have a little bit more on that nightmare front. Next one up. Next one up. So you know how Susan Wojcicki from YouTube, her sister, is uh, pretty high up there with 23andMe. She's like, oh, wow. That's a lot of communication and DNA all in one family tree. Well, now you got Blackstone is set to acquire Ancestry.com for $4.7 billion. Blackstone Group Incorporated said on Wednesday it agreed to acquire genealogy provider Ancestry.com Incorporated from private private equity rival for uh, $4.7 billion, including debt, placing a bet, big bet on family tree chasing as well as personalized medicine. You know what that means? That means medicine that is going to be um, that's going to be mixed and formulated just for a person and their specific DNA. Ancestry.com is the world's largest provider of DNA services, allowing customers to trace their genealogy and identify genetic health risks with tests sent to their home. Blackstone is hoping that more consumers staying at home amid the COVID-19 pandemic, which was just declared over uh, by the president, will turn to Ancestry.com for its services. More consumers staying at home. See, while you're at home, you might as well just uh, give us your DNA. And we'll tell you if you have any uh, Lithuanians in your family tree. So ridiculous. We believe Ancestry has a significant runway for further growth as people of all ages and backgrounds become increasingly interested in learning more about their family histories and themselves. My question is this. I have, I have, I have spoken to a number of people who have done this 23andMe DNA gra- mapping stuff, and it it has come to to seem like bullshit, bogus bullshit in general. But the other thing there too is if there is a way to accurately say, okay, well, your DNA is is concentrated around the the, the Mediterranean region or you're Slavic or surprise, you're, you know, Ethiopian. I, I, I don't know. But what is it? It might tell you a little bit about yourself on a genetic level, but as far as family histories, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like if there are histories to be hunted down, you got to do it the old-fashioned way. Somebody should tell me, if you're out there, has DNA helped you discover any significant block of time missing in your family? Like, have you been able to then go to, like, let's say you have family, you, you have uh, gen, you know, 40% German, and you've never been to Germany before? and you were trying to figure out where you came from, you got this DNA thing back, you went to Germany, and you start fiddling with the records over there and asking for one thing or another, and boom, you found it because the DNA the DNA company led you there. I would love to hear anybody who does this because I know it's, um, it's a hobby many people have. Do you find DNA to be useful if it could be trusted with the people who are going to be holding it and working with it? Um... Yeah, do you find it useful or not? Because as far as whether or not it could be trusted, these companies, Ancestry and 23andMe, can be trusted. That's another story altogether. Because, you know, birds of a feather. All right. What else do we have here? Oh, Matt, listen to this. Who do you think of when you you hear this story? The headline is, I wish I was a little bit taller. That... Song from back in the day. No, no, no. Who in our oh. lives? <laughs> Mike May. Mike May. Now, Mike May once said to us, you know, I'm thinking about getting my legs lengthened. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Now it's becoming more and more. Listen to this. This, yeah. is, this is from GQ. It's been going on for a while they've been doing this. A growing number of men are undergoing a radical and expensive surgery to grow anywhere from three to six inches. The catch, it requires having both of your femurs broken. Ugh, I hate the sound of that. That's not that bad. Having your femur snapped and, and just and separated? I mean, I've had the damage I've had done to my ankle. I would take a broken femur any day. Are you sure? The ankle hurts way more than the leg. You've had the broken femur? 
No, it's just a fact that the ankle, whenever you like, even a sprain, it's that's fucking worse than a break. Sprains do suck. They do suck. GQ goes inside the booming world of leg lengthening. I hope that Mike May did not see this. Guys, I'm going to Asia. Don't ask for what, but you'll see when I get back. I you'll get back. see. <laughs> he walks up to us and he sees t- he's like Baron Trump's height. <laughs> I went above and beyond. I got two rods. Now, <laughs> <laughs> they asked me, you want one rod or two? I said, I'm a director. I need I need all the rods you can give me. He went fi- he went to from five three to six foot five. Can you imagine Mike May? <laughs> His stretching? skin would be so tight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Lovedale is feeling pretty good Despite the fact that he should not be walking right now It's a little after 9am On a hot Saturday morning in Las Vegas And he's ambling through the area resort and casino With a pronounced limp Wincing as he throws his hips into wide semicircles And dragging his feet exactly where they need to be The effect is like a Grand Theft Auto extra Who's been, seen, who's been sniped in the butt John is in his mid 40s and stands five foot. If you're in your mid 40s, you're doing this. Let it go. I, I, I mean, this shouldn't be done anyway. Yeah. But jeez, man. 40. You're almost at the end of your life. <laughs> what? What is this? The the, the, the Neolithic <laughs> era or something? Uh, the, and stands five foot eleven and a half. A big-hearted laugh, built like a saguro cactus. If you squint, he kind of resembles a brolic Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's in town to see his orthopedic surgeon, having arrived last night from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where he works as a network engineer. Uh, 5'11's not short, though. He, maybe he was just made 5'11". Oh. John is on his feet. Uh, John is on his feet at all is impressive and probably foolish, considering that only eight months prior he was 5'8 and a half. You see? Five foot eight, even that. I mean, I guess that's a little below average. What's the average? Five seven or five nine? Uh, something around there. I don't know. Um, but yeah. So what they do is, they break your femur, they put you in a brace, and they separate your femur from one half from the other, just enough so that the so the bone starts growing in. <laughs> I just- Okay. I just pictured like you know, like Mike May laying like, there. He's happy. It's about to happen. His legs strapped in. <laughs> and they just come in with a. They come in with a mallet. Exactly. I pictured Kathy Bates and uh, and Mister. He's just coming in. Okay, Mister May, are you ready? I've I've been ready for this my whole life. <laughs> okay, we'll just bite bite down on. The, they don't even put it. They don't even give me anesthesia. <laughs> And then worse, he taps out after one leg, but still goes Stop. through with the surgery. Stop. Stop. Just one leg. Just do one leg. He gets one leg lengthened, and the other one's just a little baby leg. <laughs> Carrying around a baby leg. Uh, we should see him tomorrow for Skip's thing. We should talk to him about this. Okay, uh, what's that? Okay, well, that's it. Let's uh, let's start the show off and... Uh, oh, remind me to spray your house uh, tomorrow afternoon. Okay. You got it. All right, we'll be right back, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Uh, share the show far and wide, whether you're watching it live or on demand, because it's always great to meet new friends. Thank you for introducing me to yours. Be right back. I hate this Tumblr shit. We're like, oh, you're a Nazi. It's like, bitch... Do I look like a fucking Nazi to you? You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. That's why we're going back. Does anybody else want to stay? Let's ride!
All right. Okay, so listen. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be thinking about that all night. <laughs> Just do one. That's all. Just one. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, uh, here it is on a Friday night, and we've got some good stuff to talk about. The first thing I had to bring up is this, because before we go anywhere, and i got a little bit, of, little bit of time before, a couple of minutes before Sam jumps into the Zoom. Oh, well, here it is. Matt, you're going to love this. Now, Twitch apparently banned this guy. You're going to see. Hold on a second. Where the hell is it? Uh, where's Google? Where's Google? You can Google it. It's worth a Google. All right, here it is. Are you seeing this right now? It says, from Russia with love. This guy, he's a Russian dude. He's on Twitch. He's streaming. <laughs> he's streaming 24-7 right now, and he's trolling Europe. How's he trolling Europe? Well, this dude is running a gas stove 24-7, and streaming it on Twitch just to taunt Europe, who is, uh, which is obviously chosen, uh, uh, their leadership anyway, has chosen to commit suicide by swearing off Russian energy products over the, the war that NATO caused in Ukraine. So this guy is live on Twitch the entire, and, look, and he's playing, he's, he's playing Russian, Russian music. He's playing Russian music the entire time, and people are sending him super chats to pay for his energy bill. They're sending Super Chess to pay for the gas bill so he can stay on forever. That's awesome. It's nothing but uh, just nothing but his stove. And look, there's a picture <laughs> of Putin in the back. <laughs> it's almost like the eternal flame for JFK. <laughs> oh, so I, I had to put that out there. That is uh, that's gas stove anon. I'm calling him or Russian stove anon. That's that's here. So there that's he's. almost like the uh, Shia LaBeouf oil camera. Yes, he will not divide, but this is cool. This is funny. The he will not divide us became funny for an ironic reason. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I hope I get to talk to Shia LaBeouf one day and ask him about that particular, nobody's talked, he's having a little bit of a renaissance right now because his life changed when he when he played the, uh, he studied and played the role of uh, Padre Pio. Yeah, and I, I, all of his inter interviews have been actually really interesting. And I've I've been having a good time listening to the interviews because he does seem like a guy that is at in a, in a considerable more peaceful stable place than he was when he was attacking people in the streets of New York because of his stupid webcam but I would but nobody has brought up the he will not divide us Donald Trump TDS portion of of the last few years I would love to hear a little bit more on that I really would um because uh I, I just that's yeah, something I would like to. Probably all fucked up on drugs during that time. It was bro, a lot. He seems like he's like a a nice guy. I always liked him as an actor. Yeah, I and then he was good. and then I was just like, oh, why'd you have to go ruin it with all this nonsense? But um, yeah, he was making really good movies, bro. Like you remember Eagle Eye? Eagle I liked Eye Eagle was Eye. Fucking awesome. I liked Eagle Eye. He always did good, whatever they put him in. I mean, sometimes the script was just bad. Indiana Jones Four was just not a good movie. You know. Um, they bring back Karen Allen and him, and it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. All right, here is a headline for you. Here's a headline. Zombie wasp. Matt, you better take a listen to this because you might have to extinguish some of these zombie wasps. Zombie wasp. Zombie wasp pictured after parasite fungi took over its body. Oh, yeah. Listen to this. So all those spikes that are sticking out, that's the fungus. That's the fungus. Look. You know what's the crazy thing now? I've, I've learned about this fungus years ago. That whenever <coughs> insects like ants, if there's a, you know, a colony of ants and one of them gets infected, it's crazy. The other ants know when the other person's infected and they actually isolate them from the colony. Yeah. They'll pick them up, they'll drag them off to another branch yeah. or something and let them just die there. But the fact that this fungus starts inhabiting you and, and overriding the, um, the anatomy of these bugs, turning them into zombies is crazy. Hold on. 
It controls and maintains insect population. Well, yeah, it does. Well, look at how it controls it. You might have seen this. Here's here's a couple a small compilation, 48 seconds of beetles and cicadas, and and uh, y you'll see that where there's really nothing left of of the organism, and they're still walking around because of this fungus is controlling it. Listen. This is a zombie insect. Well, that thing is hollowed out. There's nothing in there. He's not alive, but incredibly. He's not dead either. No Look at body. That. There's nothing left of it. Just a head, only one wing, and he's crawling. It's a fucking zombie. The nervous system of these insects was manipulated by a silent killer. This cicada you are the can't silent control killer. its own body, <laughs> which has already been taken over by another being. Although it's still alive, its organism is slowly being devoured. And, and there you go. There's the culprit, the spores. Oh, a mushroom. A mushroom. You start thinking about that. I start thinking about the, the happening. You remember that movie, The Happening, by uh, I I M. Saw that. M. M. Night Shyamalan? I never saw that. I'm not a big fan of his. No. Not really. Which did, have you seen any of his stuff? Was he, he did No Country for Old Men, right? Did he? I think so. Well, obviously, he got kicked off of the Sixth Sense for most people. That's that's what kicked him off for most people is the Sixth Sense. Well, that was that was a good movie. Uh, there were signs. You didn't like signs. Oh, signs was good. Yeah. Well, Mel Gibson. I like Mel Gibson. Uh, the Village. Did you ever see that? Never saw that. And the happening. I don't know. There's probably other things. There's probably other things out there. I just don't know. But this just makes me think. It really does make me think. Spores getting into human beings. Controlling human beings through this stuff, yeah, maybe bro. it doesn't completely consume them, but it maybe it, it makes them uh, subject to influence from some kind of a hive mind. Not yet. I mean, they'll probably figure a way out to uh, make it in a lab. Whatever the fuck that insect is, or however it's working, they'll find out a way to to do it in a lab. <clears throat> well, you just better watch out. You better watch out that you don't uh, you don't come across any of those things on the on the road. I, I, I found one of those spotted... Uh, yeah, I saw that. I saw one uh, like a few weeks ago, too, when I What's it called? It. Spotted lanternfly. A lanternfly? Yeah. They were giving us warnings about those yeah. things coming up here a couple of years ago, and they're very weird. Yeah. It was sitting right there in the middle of the driveway. It's uh, about maybe an inch... I don't know. It's a little bit bigger than a quarter as far as just the entire radius and diameter. and what. It, it's just like that big, but it's got these... Very interestingly colored, light gray. It's a nice looking bug. It is like the, the, if you've seen it open its wings, it's red underneath. It's very like, brilliant red. Yeah. But what's the what's the deal about it? Like what what are, what are those spotted here? Let me try to get a picture they of. They fuck up a uh, certain type of tree, and they like suck it dry. They suck all the nutrients out of it. Spotted. There it is. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the other thing that got me. Is that it's a little bit more like there is a um, like a purple element to the outer the outer wings. Probably make nice uh, fishing uh, lure. The little fly. Yeah, look at that. Help find the spotted lantern fly. It can't fly. It can't. No. Then how the hell did it get in my driveway? They walk. They climb. From where? Trees. But how did it get to the tree? Oh, I don't know how the fuck they got here. If they can fly, it's not for a very long distance. That's in. Uh, it's I like mean, a very, very short distance they can fly. Well, they gotta have something up their sleeve because they got here. Then, whatever. But that's that's that. The spores. Maybe I'll, I'll ask. I will ask Sam Tripoli about that when he shows up. Let's go into some. Let's go into some headlines from the Babylon Bee. Actually, no, we'll do Babylon Bee later on. Let me introduce you to an, uh, another place that I found. My buddy Brendan sent this to me. It's called the Pacific, which is, is supposed to be the opposite of the Atlantic uh, magazine that has that has beclowned itself over the last few years. Uh, here, here are some headlines from the Pacific, which I found them. Uh, I, I was 
shared them on Twitter. Here's a headline. The upside to economic recession. Experts explain how it's not all doom and gloom when your bank account shrinks. (laughs) You get a lot of that now. Stop sexualizing it. Men reading to children in lingerie, tired of the stigma. (laughs) Just because there's no evidence doesn't mean Matt Gates is innocent. Now, isn't that the entire? <laughs> isn't that the entire thing there? That's the entirety of everything with them. Is that with that thing they said like during the summer? Would they say he's not having sex with a prostitute that or he something, was, an underage prostitute? That he was transporting. That's it. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, but the best thing is that, like that. I, I didn't even pay attention to it because I, I just know who's yeah. behind this shit. Two days ago, two to get two days ago, I see a headline that says prosecutors. Um, decline to charge Matt Gates. What I, I forget the way that they that they were um, yeah, they're phrasing it, 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 but it, in in a way where it's not like uh, I don't know because they didn't want to say because he was innocent. There's no evidence that there of any wrongdoing. They just needed it to be that while well, prosecutors declined at this time, it, almost like it was temporary. They're not they're not accepting defeat. He's still a scumbag. But um, we're not. He's not going to have any charges pressed. Which is, uh, I mean, you're you're calling him all these names. You're saying he's definitely who what he is, and you have the entire judicial system stacked against him, and nobody is uh, is going to charge him. Bullshit. So, I understand this. Here's another one. Feminists help Iran the only way they know how. Complaining online. <laughs> Another one headline, how to beat inflation, stop being poor. That's a very simple one. Yeah. Climate researchers puzzled by cooling temperatures across northern hemisphere. <laughs> Pampers executive secretly owns ultrasound machines faking heartbeats to boost sales. <laughs> FBI finds no link between Biden's speech and murder of teenage Republican. Yeah, you heard about that one? Yeah. Yeah. He ran over an 18 year old kid. Yeah. Incredible. 2018 and governor's he's out race. Right now, you know that, right? Uh, that out on bond. Free, yeah. Out on bond. He <coughs> should be. He should be at, at the very least in a padded room. There should be old time justice. He would have been strung up to a tree. Right there. 2018 governor race winner, <laughs> uh, Stacey Abrams, <laughs> exposes doctors secretly create babies' heartbeats. So I also have the uh, the um, Alex Jones stuff. Have you been watching any of the new trial? It is a new trial. See, I thought it was like a recap of the other one, so I haven't been watching it. Now i got to go and watch this to see what he says. Well, I have two clips here that we can... What we do you can, mean, like just Lane Maxwell did for the Clintons? Something like that. So, although, I mean, the first one is just a... Uh, I think it's hilarious. They talk about memes. He's try- The <laughs> prosecutor is trying to get him in, in trouble with the judge. Yeah. Uh, so oh. talking about the memes of her having yeah. lasers shooting out of her eyes, take a take a listen to this. That's just so easy for him. But look, look the other memes I have. Oh, uh, look, well, Donald Trump has those eyes. Like that's a compliment. To it's the a judge. It's a compliment. I think she's a great judge. You called this judge a tyrant, correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, what are you gonna do? Say not really. Good. Good. And you actually use that word a lot with your audience. You call people tyrants, don't you? Only when they act like it. Okay. <laughs> and one way that you've been conveying to your audience that Judge Bellis has been acting like a tyrant is by showing her with lasers coming out of her eyes, right? You know you did that? I didn't direct that first time I saw it was in court. Oh, so you've been watching this? Yeah, I've been watching. Okay. You could have just watched from the state. Action, argumentative. Listen, this, the, the prosecutor is such a fruitcake. Such a fruitcake. And the acting is so bad. He is try, he In a courtroom, obviously, a lawyer, a lawyer is where they could be the toughest guy or girl in the world. And, you know, speak truth to power and not be afraid and, you know, being an advocate for families behind. It, it, this is such a bad performance. It, it's really so cringy. Even if I wanted to see Alex Jones just sunk, the, the, the theatrics are just so stupid. 
But you've been broadcasting your show during this trip, haven't you? I have taped some of my show. Let's pull up 477. <laughs> this should be in already. It is a full exhibit. What was it, Ron? Pull up 477, the damning evidence. Take this a look. Oh, it shows like this fucking guy. Because <laughs> that's contempt. <laughs> this is a this is four number forty four seventy seven. This is an exhibit. They use that as an exhibit in a courtroom. How fucking weak! This entire thing is so damn weak. You want to hear the the the? Judge, court- he made this picture of. Oh, you know, I'm doing Alex Jones. He made this picture of you, Judge. Look. Here's the coup de gras. You want to hear the big one? <clears throat> this is two. This is two minutes long. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Is this the case cracker? Well, I, I mean, it's case cracker. This is when the the bad performing clown of a prosecutor tries to really bring a uh, tries to bring a confrontation, some sort of a, confr- a confrontation through him. You know, um, like almost like he wants the parents. He's trying to channel the parents behind him to fight fight vicariously through it's so bad and he's talking to him about the parents and and uh and who he's hurt and the stuff he does and lying take a listen to this though this is great this is where he he really just he digs in that's the real robbie parker isn't it i mean i said years ago i thought sandy would have robbie parker's sitting right here he's real isn't he yes they're bringing up that guy robbie parker this is the guy that um he the very famous video of him walking out of the building getting ready to to go and face the cameras and he goes from laughing oh, smiling yeah, yeah i saw that on live tv i know and he, and then he just kind of takes a breath puts himself into character it seems and then all of a sudden he is a bereaved hyperventilating parent again now it was such a here's the thing dude i saw that i remember my, i watched it i was with my mom and she's like why the hell are they laughing you see so you see matt your mom is a conspiracy theorist for noticing that that's what it comes down to here because it, it whether or not something ends up being uh you know a a false flag or something completely i don't know whatever seeing something like that there is no reason, there's no reason to come down on discerning, conscious individuals who see that very weird, stark break in behavior and say, that is very odd. I wonder what the hell that is all about. Yeah, and, actually fe- and actually feel suspicion building in your gut because it's, it's just not right. Now that you know, you can that, that somebody can come out and and explain how you know everybody acts differently under duress and uh, with with <clears throat> grief and all that shit. Gee, fuck that! No one acts like that when you lose a kid. I mean, I don't have kids. I don't have nieces and nephews, but I've lost family members, and you know, like I, I'm not laughing at the day it happens, the day after it happens. Like I'm not in the mood to laugh. There's, and either way, because that was such one of the biggest video anomalies that everybody, people who don't even question things, saw that and said, ah, "I don't know, that's 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 weird. I don't know how anybody could even. I don't know where that reaction comes from." People were asking that now. Now, because of that, was such a universally pointed to anomaly in the entire story. There, I guess this confrontation in in the courthouse was just something that was just waiting to happen. It was Alex Jones versus this Robbie Parker guy. So let's just just go again. Yeah. Robbie Parker's sitting right here. He's real, isn't he? Yes. And for years, you put a target on his back, didn't you? Objection in the form of that judge. Oh. Well, I mean, I, I didn't you? I have better not said his name. It's true. I haven't said other people's names. Who they are? You put a target on his back, just like you did every single parent and loved one sitting here. Did you? No, I didn't. No, you didn't. That's argument. Listen. There's no, there is speculative. There is no foundation for it, and it's inappropriate. Let's move on. These are real people. You know, Mr. Jones. I think you just told him to move on. Just like all the Iraqis, but you liberals kill and love. It's just you're unbelievable. You switch on emotions on and off when you want. You're, it's just ambulance chasing. It's and, and that is true. That is true. You know, you, you're talking about switching on emotions on and off. You see something, you you uh, 
it, it, something hits you, you, I don't know, you, you question it, you think it's suspicious, you believe it outright, whatever. Everybody's different. And obviously more people have uh, a little bit more power than others in getting an opinion out there. And obviously thoughts and, and all that that go into public do create ripples. So, so absolutely. But just talking about this, this outrage and you th think about people where lies and where people believing outright lies without questioning have, has caused so much damage and death and, uh, and destruction in the world. He's 100% right for bringing that up. Switching on and off emotions. Listen. Why don't you show a little respect? Objection, Judge. I think that. Why don't you show a little respect? That's what I'm talking about. The, the acting is so bad. It's so bad. You get what you give in this court. Objection. You have families in this courtroom here that lost children, sisters, wives. Is there a line? I don't even know what the line of questioning is. I. He's not. He's just. It's just. It's like a, a him. bunch. Of, you can sit there and and punch him in front of people. I guess. Moms. Is this a struggle session? Are we in China? Yeah. They, I've already said I'm sorry hundreds of times, and I, and I'm done saying I'm sorry. I didn't regenerate this. I wasn't the first person to say it. American gun owners didn't like being blamed for this as the left did, so I'm we rejected it mentally and said it must not be true. And but I legitimately thought it might have been staged, and I stand by that, and I don't apologize for and, it. And, and don't apologize, Mr. Jones, please don't apologize. No, I've already apologized to the parents over because and over again. You know, I don't objection, apologize to you. Objection, don't apologize objection. to you. You're gonna do it again. Objection, guys. This. Objection, no, I'm not. objection, not. argument. Don't apologize objection. to you. Well, it's hard for me to get a word in it twice. Now, you're the judge. Yeah, it's you just courtroom. you just let you want him to get beat up in front of the cameras. The problem is that it's not very hard to do it, and the prosecutor looks like a flailing little Commodus over here. That's just really what it looks like. This looks like Commodus uh, on the sands of the Coliseum, just trying to punch Maximus's Maximus's uh, shoulder. You know, when he's there's nothing left, and he's just flailing. You got a little Commodus over here as prosecutor. Is, but I think your there's point. one officer in the court and one witness or witness in so an officer in the court heard the objection. And I can't rule on your attorney's excuse me. So sorry, oh, wait a minute. I can't rule on your attorney's So those are just two clips of what I got. I, de definitely the one of the more fiery ones. And I I like I like what he throws back at them because at this point it's just really where are we going? Where do we go from here? Well, uh, we are going to take some. We're going to take some calls. We're going to take some calls from everybody. It's a Friday night, and uh, Sam Tripoli is not in the room just yet. I hope that everything is all right, because should have heard from him well, about twelve, thirteen minutes ago. Nine one four five nine five six nine five three. What was your favorite moment of the week? And as it, and actually tacking on to last night's show, Matt, we did stories from doctors and nurses in the field, crazy stories, gross stories, funny stories. If you have any of those stories that you want to call in about, then please go ahead and do so. 914-595-6953. It's open lines for now that we are here uh, in Friday, and we'll see if uh, Sam shows up. 914-595-6953. I have one of those sh those stories I can throw at you right now that came in from a viewer that emailed it in. Let me get it to you. Here you go. An odd nurse story. This is from Mel. Mel says, Frank, I'm emailing my story because I'm struggling with uh, to find my password for the forum. Hopefully she's found everything. The forum is pretty easy. Anyway, here's my story. I was at a new job, so I was uh, following around a peer, getting oriented, uh, orientated uh, with the job. <laughs> we were going to do a procedure on a patient that was in a sensitive area, to say the least. Penis? A peni. Penis. Uh, you ever hear of a necrotic penis? When your penis, like, dies? And falls off. <laughs> Who'd that happen to? Uh, we had a... That's we had, a actually real thing? Your dick can actually fall off? One of the nurses... Literally fall off? One of the nurses, she told us last night, or th through the thread, these show threads have been great, um, she told us through the thread 
that she was confident. There was a time in her little boy's lives where they were very, very, they had a big uh, sweet tooth and they would eat a lot of candy and specifically Tootsie Rolls. Tootsie Rolls are good. So she would confiscate Tootsie Rolls from them all the time and, you know, put her in a pocket and just take it out of the house and all that. Well, she was dealing with a very, very ill patient, an ill man at the hospital that day, which uh, who I believe he ended up dying. From that? No, had all types of, had, you know, renal failure and oh, damn. had all types. Yeah, what the hell did he do? It's kidneys. It's like, all from the kidneys? Well, no, I'm just saying kidneys and there was a few other things that was going on with him. But at the same time, yeah, something was going on where she was changing him. They were trying to get him ready for one thing or another, transporting him. And when she moved him over, to, I guess to change a diaper or something, she noticed a Tootsie Roll in the diaper. And she was mortified. She was trying to go through all the reasons why one of her children's Tootsie Rolls would have been in this guy's diaper. Did it fall out of her pocket or what? And then to her uh, shock and, and um, you know... Realized that it wasn't a Tootsie Roll. It was a necrotic penis that had already fallen off into the diaper. And those are the kind of wonderful stories I've been getting. But here's another one. I was at a new job, and we were preparing to do a surgery on a patient that was in a sensitive area. We went into the room, and I noticed I had a ton of... That he had a ton of moose-stuffed animals. Pictures of, of moose, etc. So there's just moose all over the place. He was in the hospital for a car accident which left him a a paraplegic. And he was recovering from a very bad lung infection. As we were performing the procedure, I was taking note of the moose paraphernalia. I was feeling bad for him because he had two nurse, uh, uh, he had two nurses there working around his sensitive area. So I started to make some light conversation with him, knowing that it's not very common to see moose in in the wild. I asked him, have you ever seen a moose up close? The room became very quiet. He replied, that's how I had my accident. Then the, room into, the, then the room took on an awkward tone. When we were done and left the room, my preceptor informed me that his patient hit a moose while driving. The moose came through the windshield of his car rear end first. Sadly, it hit the patient, breaking his neck, hence the paralysis. The moose lost its bowels on impact, and that's why he had a very bad lung infection. Oh, oh my God. The, so, Do you know how fast you have to be going? He must have been in a truck, too, if he did that to a fucking moose. Not one of my better moments, and I'll never forget it. Mel. Now, here's the thing. First of all, just thinking about that is crazy. You hit the moose. It comes through your window, ass first. And it breaks your neck. And in the process, it also shits all over you. And probably in his mouth. I, I mean, how, oh. how else? How else he, well, he, obviously, he huffed this stuff. And uh, it went into his lungs. So that's terrible. That's just terrible. Um, I'd obviously take a lung infection over the paralysis. But at the same time, if his room is already filled with moose-stuffed animals, then everybody's obviously... Everybody in his life is being a little bit more ironic about it, I guess. I mean, that, that wasn't put there by the hospital. That would be just cruel. Yeah. You know? I don't know why family, family and friends would do that to somebody who just lost control of their, uh, their legs. Hey, he's just going to get a couple rods put in his legs now. Yeah. Or Elon Musk. Elon Musk help him out. That's a hard... It, that's one thing where I hope it, it, AI and Neuralink technology, as I always say, have at it when it comes to paraplegics and quadriplegics. There's there's no reason why technology and technological breakthroughs like that shouldn't be able to be applied to people who have lost independence and functionality like that. 100% ain't nothing yeah. would be stopping me from getting that linked up with me. I think one day that'll be something that's... Not a thing. Paralysis. Oh, I hope so. That's one of the scariest things I can think of. It really is. It always has been. Always has been. Let's take a, uh, a, a call. Yeah. Elizabeth, SoCal, EMS. Oh, we know. There's probably a lot of different uh, stories on the other side of this <laughs> line right now. What's going on, Elizabeth? Okay, well, I got a spooky time story for you. Spooky. Yes, okay. all right. Spooky time. Okay. 
so uh, I, I was a, a really young nurse, and I was living in Hawaii, and there you would have your windows open. So I was working a midnight shift, and the wind was blowing, and the curtains were just going back and forth, you know, ooh, 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 all that scary stuff. And the charge nurse said, go down and check Mrs. So-and-so. She's about ready to die, and I need you to tell me she's dead. I'm like, what? Wow. So I would never dealt with a dead body. So I had to go down to end of this dark hallway the only light on is her room at the end of the hallway and the curtains are blowing i get down there and i stand at the door and i look and i go ah she doesn't look like she's breathing so i run down and i tell the charge nurse she's not breathing i think she's dead and the charge nurse looks and says well okay i'll be down there just a minute to check her i'm like but she's dead i go yeah yeah yeah." she says she knows so she comes down a minute later and she puts her stethoscope to this lady's chest like for a half a second and she goes yeah she's dead wrap her up and i'm like what so she's yeah I'll wrap her up i've never wrapped up anybody and she goes oh i'll get betsy to help you you know she'll show you how to wrap her up so this old nurse comes down shows me how to wrap up this lady's body and she, I, she looked like she could have been sent fedex and you know in a package we get her all wrapped up and i'm like oh my god i was just like shaking because the first person i've ever dealt with that was dead right so uh, we get as far as the door and all of a sudden, I hear a, Ugh. and I'm like, what the hell? And I turned around, and this lady that was dead had just blown some kind of gasket. I don't know. She breathed something out, right? And so I, I turned to Beth, and I go, oh, my God, was she dead? Was she dead? And the old nurse says to me, well, honey, if she wasn't then, she sure is now, so why worry about it? Wow. And that was my evening. <laughs> well, now, 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 the that that groan, that is uh, something that will happen a- afterwards, right? It just gas is esca- escaping. Right. right, right. But I didn't know that at the time. I was like totally freaking out because I was a very young nurse. Well, and now when you wrap them, is it just head to toe? Do they look like a they look like a mummy or what? They look like a mummy, but they're in a plastic sheet, and I'm telling you, they. They look like a FedEx package. I mean, we get them all wrapped up, and their arms and legs are tucked in, and we tie them wow. up with tape and um, string and all sorts of stuff. And we've got things we got to wrap around their jaw. I mean, it's you know, we got to like you were sending a ham in the mail. That's wow. kind of what they look like. That is that is freaky. First of all, the way that you're describing the hospital sounded like the hospital in The Godfather. Why the hell is it a long, why would there ever be a long, dark hallway with somebody staying in a room at the end of it? Turn those damn lights on. Exactly. And, and this is like the midnight shift, literally. So I was, I was terrified. It was this time of year, too. So it did not help. It just did not help. So. Jeez But that Louise. was my first experience of wrapping a body. So what, what year was that, Elizabeth? I want to say 19... 19- 74, 75, probably right around in there. Wow. Okay. Well, hey, I- I'm so happy we took this call. That That is, I like asking for, for topics and somebody shows up right on time with what I was looking for, and it is spooky as hell. <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, if you ever have anything more, I, to, to, by all means, write into the show because uh, October is spooky month, and I love spooky stories. Okay, we'll do that. Absolutely. Love you, Frank. Thank you for everything, Elizabeth. Be well. You too. You take care. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. She wrapped the body up in saran wrap. I know. I don't want to be put, like, wrapped up like that. Do you have to make sure, like, when I die, I'm burned immediately, like, out like on, a, on a lake. Like, the second I die, I need to be pushed out on a lake and... The Viking burial? Yes. Well, you are Norse, right? Or you I, were? I was for like a week or two, and then you found Jesus again. Yeah, <laughs> that was a fun. That was a funny, uh, a funny phase. Yeah, um, I don't know, man. Uh, that's gonna be really hard, depending on where you. First of all, the assumption. Oh, I know when I, I, I'll know when I die. I'll know right. Oh, you'll know. Second I, right I'm before. sure you will. Usually, everybody knows when they die. It's I don't just, know. Some people just drop dead. That's like a thing. So you're feeling, all right, so we're, we're going to have to be, like, n- near you. What are you going to do, call us up? Hey, I'm about to die. <laughs> Listen, I'm about to die. <laughs> here's, the, here's the nearest lake. 
bring my boat. I have a special boat that's on the side of my garage. It needs to be. Strap it to the top of your car. Come pick up my body. You can strap me to the top of the car when I'm dead, but it needs to be a lake like somewhere in the Adirondacks. Dude, I'm not going to go you just hunt. put me on top of the car. I don't give a shit. I'll yeah. be dead. Me, Anthony, and Mike showing up to someplace saying we're here for his body. <laughs> you better not have wrapped it. He did not want to be wrapped. We have the boat ready. What boat? <laughs> he wants to be burned on the lake. You know it's not going to, You know what that, that means? What, what do you think is going to happen when you get burned on the lake? Like you're going to be turned into ashes? You're going to be slightly charred, and then you're just, <laughs> and then, and then just going to be floating. <laughs> you're just going to be a waterlogged. Just going to be floating there. It's like, like, like there's... That's not gonna. That's not gonna do the the trick. Okay, let's take. <laughs> let's take another call. Uh, another call. Oh, we heard from this guy last night. What's going on, Ricardo? Hey, how you doing, Frank? I'm doing all right. Uh, I was calling for a spooky story. Okay, go ahead. Give us a spooky story. Uh, I, well, there's there's a few, man, but uh, I'll go with one of the best. Ones. Give it. Give us the best one. Yes. Um, so I was helping a friend of mine move back uh, into town from college. She was going to A and M Corpus in Texas, and uh, whenever I would go and visit her, her roommate would she used to practice like Wicca and different types of witchcraft and whatnot. But whenever we would go show up like late at night, she would be snoring. But in between the snore, she'd moan, almost like a incubus was you know, invoked or something. Like, I mean, really orgasmic moan. Orgasmic? So I would always be like, dude, what the so fuck? Hot. Yeah, like, literally, so like, hot. moaning. Is she hot? And, uh, no. Oh, God, okay. No. Well, that sucks. So, so I assume... Oh, right, people who aren't hot should never have, like, pleasure. <laughs> no. They, w- they wouldn't have to. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I, uh, whenever I was helping her move, her roommate was already gone. So I was, you know, laying in the bed where she used to sleep, watching TV across the room, and, you know, like, my friend was sleeping at her side of the the dorm. All of a sudden, the light turns off, and I figured, hey, well, she's going to bed, whatever, I'll just go to bed as well. But couldn't go to bed, tossing and turning, and I see a figure kind of walk towards me. And I was like, oh, God, like, please, no. Like, you're one of my friends, and I really don't want to do this, you know? Oh, you, 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 uh, thought, that she, you thought that she was, the, the, the moaner was trying to come on to you in the middle of the night? Well, I thought my friend had turned off the TV from her side of the dorm, walking towards me, because all I saw was a shadow figure. So I was like, oh, God, please, no. You know, she's just a friend, not attractive to her at all, just really good friend. So I, like, you know, turn to the wall, and I hear and I feel the bed just kind of sink down. And I, you know, thought it was her, so I, like, immediately, like, turn to, to, to the right, and the shadow figure goes over my head and around to the side of her dorm. And I was like, holy shit. Get out of here. Like, it is, did I really just, ex- like, see this? So I was like, all right, let's see what it, this is all about. And I said it out loud, which I think was my mistake. Because so I said, this is your one and only chance to do whatever it is that you got to do. Because I wanted to see if this was real. So I said it out loud, took down the... the the blankets that I had on top of me, and I shit you not, like I heard and I felt the bed creak down again, and a hand just pressed down on my stomach, and all the way from the bottom of my junk, all the way up to my throat, it was just this big, big scratch, like like a long nail just went all the way up, and but nobody was there, so I immediately like grabbed my blankets, the pillow. I went over to the side of the dorm where she, my friend was staying at, and I see that she's passed out. And I was like, holy shit, like, this is not cool. So I, like, didn't want to wake her up, 
you know, because it was like three, four o'clock in the morning. Uh, we were supposed to be leaving the next morning. So I just got into like a fetus position at, by the floor on her bed. And I was trying to say they are father. And I could not say anything else than just our, 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 our. And all of a sudden, <clears throat> like picture frames, things like paintings were falling from the, the, her wall. And I just felt something just grab me, like just like a big, big hug from behind. And I immediately blacked out. Well, I woke up the next morning and she was like, dude, what did you do? Like, why is all like my picture frames broken and everything? I was like, uh, no, we need to get out of here like now. So you like, had, is- so, okay. So, so, so you uh, obviously you get the hell out of there. You vacate the place, but you were uh, molested by a by a shadow person, by a ghost. <laughs> that has I don't know if it was molested because I, I mean I didn't feel any penetration or anything like that. I just felt something grab me to where I don't know if it was actually, you know, like an angel uh, protecting me. That was a uh, that I was a molestation. From a very 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 religious background. So I've always thought that the more religious you are the more the devil's going to try to attack you. That you is, know, I, I believe, why? I don't know, I know that you didn't have, I didn't know, I know you, you did not describe intercourse because all the people who have described instances where they have had, uh, they've been completely raped or had intercourse with some kind of a ghost, that's called, I think it's called spectrophilia. And, but you you, okay. de- you were definitely sexually assaulted. I mean, they, you, you got a, a scratch from your balls to your chest. That's a uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, and and but the the pressing down of the depression on the mat, the mattress, and knowing it wasn't anybody in the room just trying to get a little a- ass, is wow. Well, Ricardo, thank you for that one. That's definitely one I'm going to remember. I, I haven't not known anybody that's gone through that except you. So, thank you for the call. Absolutely, man. There's right. plenty more, so I'll send you an email later. You got it. <laughs> oh, you got it. Give me, give me all the, uh, all the, the, the line items. That'd be awesome. That's Ricardo. What the hell do you think about that? Well, she practiced black magic, so she's opening portals. Who? His roommate. Well, the roommate wasn't part of it. Well, she was a witch oh, or whatever oh, so oh, oh 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 yeah that's right she may have been the one to open it all up i had someone use black magic on me they put a curse on me and i was coughing and throwing up blood for like a week how did you get it to stop it just won't it just stopped i wasn't sick or anything bro and she because it was this i don't know she was from like india or wherever it was and she would just sit there and not talk and i would be just like hey smile this and like fuck with her and someone told me she put a curse on someone else we knew, and he got sick. He was throwing up for a week or whatever. I was like, yeah, okay. And one day, I guess she just had enough of me fucking with her. She waved her hand. She said something to me, and I, like, I fucking, you know, kept fucking with her. And this was during summer school. And then me and Diego were walking home, bro, and just boom, like that. I got sick. I threw up. It was blood. I felt fine, though. I didn't feel sick. I'm like, yo, she put a curse on me? And for like a whole week, I was just throwing up blood. Oh, so Diego knows the story. Yeah. I got to ask him about yeah, that. Yeah, ask him if he remembers about that time that the, the Indian girl, the witch from summer school, put a curse on me. I got to remember this because, he, I mean, who knows? He may even be around tomorrow. Maybe he stops by tomorrow for the uh, for the thing with with uh, for Skip. That that's an interesting. Okay, so you had a curse and it just went away. Maybe it was just one of those five day curses. I don't know what it, what the hell it was. I don't know, but whatever she did, like, it did something to me. Well, it's seven fifty nine. We are at the halfway point. I don't know what happened to Sam. Um, I confirmed time zones time and time again. Um, so we'll see if he shows up at eight thirty instead of seven thirty. Obviously, there'll be less time to talk about anything at that point. But uh, my apologies, ladies and gents. We will see what happens in the second half. But I think we're having a good time. Well, all of a sudden, this is turning into a spooky story, open lines kind of a show. And I am totally fine with that on a Friday night after a week well worked. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back.
Welcome to intermission. We'll be right back. Yeah, intermission. Quite frankly. 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 We all support quite frankly. Not quite. Let's go, Brandon. I yeah. agree. Quite frankly, in Roma, Italia. Quite frankly, you're going on Frank's show tonight? I really like you. You're very smart. So everybody watch. Quite frankly. With Frank. Quite frankly. How dare you? Well, <sighs> the other little bit of work I'll have to little little bit of work I'll have ahead of me to go home after tonight if Sam doesn't show up is I'll have to change the title in big ways because the only reason why uh, High Jump was <sighs> going to come up was because he knows about it and he's been talking about it and. Uh, What's high jump? Operation high jump. You know about Admiral Byrd and his oh, the his mid or Middle Earth. That's part of it. It's a real important thing. I mean, even right down to, even right down to uh, what's his name, Admiral Forrestal, the 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 Navy, the Navy uh, Navy Secretary, James Forrestal, his death at uh, Bethesda Hospital. That's why when Trump went into Bethesda for COVID treatment, I was like, uh-oh. Because the, the big thing behind Forrestal going to Bethesda was that people were saying that he was starting to talk. He was the one that organized the entire military expedition down there with, uh, with Byrd and Nimitz, and they brought a gigantic fighting force for what was just supposed to be reconnaissance flights. And they came back about four months early. It was supposed to be a six-month expedition. They came back in two months. And and uh, the, the widely held belief is that <coughs> he started to talk about this stuff. <coughs> you all right? Yeah. And he was uh, he was put into the Naval Hospital Psychiatric Unit, and he was, su- he was separated from everybody, including his wife. And then a short time after that, he was um, out the window. He jumped out he the sh- window. Really? It, it, when was this? This was back in the... It might have been late late forties or early fifties. I forget when he jumped out the window. Yeah. Yeah. So, there's a lot. Was he telling people about the underground Aryan base that they had found and, <clears throat> and the links that they are putting together because of uh, one thing or who knows? But we'll see if that has to be saved for, as a talk for another time. We've talked about that a lot though it's very important it could be a very important part of all the stories when you think about linking the the pre-world war ii world to the post-world war ii world um yeah that's that let's take a call actually no let's go into the grab the into the super chats quite frankly superchats.com you can get your thoughts right onto the air and support the show a little bit 
Let's go and see what people have got going on over there. Summer711 says, Frank, can you please ask Sam, where's Johnny? Love you guys. Well, I'll ask him. Don't worry. I will ask him. Uh, let's see. Over here on Rumble. A lot of people hanging out, having a good time. And then on Foxhole, I just want to make sure I got everybody. Robert Sorens sent a little something. Thank you. Emmer Flo says, Frank, my husband found his mother. He was adopted. She would not give the father's name and barely cared. Uh, it, but is this has to do with genealogy? If it does, let me know. I mean, does that mean, did he find his mother through DNA? And how, how did that happen? How did that happen? Because I, th I thought that DNA ancestry stuff was really one of those things that just, um, that gave you where a lot of your DNA is, uh, you know, geographically located. If that's even a thing. I think it is. But like I said, trust is something entirely different. Rise Attire says that's like when Kyle from South Park gets surgery to be a black ball player. Mr. Garrison's testicles for knees. I was thinking about that a lot lately because it's one of the more dis it was one of the more disturbingly funny episodes of South Park uh, when everybody was get becoming um, trans. Yeah, but that was years ago. That was years ago, and it was of course an absurdity because you had Kyle. This short Jewish kid that wants to be a black ball player. So he's having his his legs lengthened. And for his knees, for some reason, it took the the amputated testicles of Mr. Garrison, who had just completed a sex change surgery himself, to be there. But not only that, it was Stan's father. Do you remember what Stan's father did? He became a dolphin. Oh, yeah, he did. He says, I've always wanted to be a dolphin, and it, is, it was so disturbing. <laughs> it was just so disturbing, but hilarious at the same time. They, <clears throat> try, they tried to ch turn him into a dolphin. He always wanted to be one. We're there. All right, Sean Joe, thank you. Boys Block again, thank you. And EO says, how's our non-chicken nugget feeling? She is great. Back to... Uh, Back to old form. Just a little bit of a cough left, but uh, you can you can tell it all. It's all breaking up. She doesn't know how to spit it out. Does she so. have the COVID too? I don't know, dude. It's it, <coughs> it's it's exactly what she had in in June. In fact, it was maybe just a little bit worse because in June when she had COVID, our doctor said um, she only had less than 24 hours of a fever. And uh, this and, and this past uh, go around, she had a little bit of a buildup with the congestion on Friday and Saturday, and then on Sunday and Monday she had fever. By Tuesday is when the fever was gone, and she was starting to become a little bit more of herself. She was still tired, but she, she had definitely turned a corner. And then Wednesday and Thursday, just like you know, running around the house, dancing, flying around. It's been it was good. So it it was the same exact thing. It's just that the fever lasted two days instead of a day. All right, let's go to the calls. King 40's on the air with Frank and Matt. What's going on, King? What's happening, brothers? Hey, how's, uh, your, how's your week? Very good. Good. Um, could I elaborate a little bit more, since you have time tonight, on my um, story at work there where I got... Uh, strangled or tried to strangle me? Yes, absolutely you can. I, I need to add a little more details because a lot of people were kind of busting my balls and mocking me like I was some kind of punk, which I ain't. But I, I can take the ball busting. But here's the thing. Here's a little more backstory on the co-worker that attacked me. So previously, he had invited me to his house to watch Tyson Fury beat that guy's ass for the last time. Okay. And um, and um, I was there at the fight at his house. And number one, I was shitting all over him in his own house in front of his wife, his kids, and his friends. So you had a perfect time to attack me there. In your own house while I'm shitting on you in front of your family and friends, and you did nothing. You sat there like a bitch and took it. 
So what he did is what they call in prison and jail a PC move. It means protective custody. You start a fight in front of the cops because you know they'll jump in and break it up. So that's pretty much what he did at work. Ah. You understand? Yeah. You see what I'm trying to say there, Frankie? Now I know. I, because I'm I know. Shit, no. I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, now I know a new term. The PC. It's a PC move. PC move, protective custody. You start a fight in front of the cops because you know they're going to break it up. So this is what this guy did. He was waiting for his chance at work to get back at me. And, and, my right hand to God, people, I never fucked this guy's wife, but this is what she said to me. When I first showed up and sat down at the table, she couldn't take her eyes off me. No word of a lie, guys. And she's like, you look awfully familiar. I'm like, oh, no, no, don't do this to me in front of your fucking husband. Like, the bitch wanted to fuck me. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know you. She goes, no, I know you from somewhere. I'm like, no, you don't. And she goes, yeah, I do. And I'm like, oh, you motherfucking cunt. That's what these broads do when they want to fuck you, you know what I mean? Or they want to humiliate their husbands or boyfriends and shit like that. Oh. So that's another thing this broad was doing. Now, so you can see the pent up anger this guy had and wanted to strangle me. Well, why didn't you go to his? Why, I fucked, why, why did I fucked his wife and I didn't even do it? Well, why okay. why did you go to his? Why did you go to his house and and uh, and start busting anybody's balls in front of their family? Why that happen? We were just sitting around, having a few beers, watching a fight, busting balls. Oh, okay. I mean, it was nothing crazy. Okay. It, it was just regular ball busting. No, no, no. <laughs> it wasn't like, hey, your kids are retards, fuck them, no, your wife's okay. a fucking <laughs> lure. Okay. No, it was nothing like that. No, 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 no. It was just regular dude ball busting. Oh, all right. The same thing I was doing at, same thing I was doing at work that night. That's what I'm getting at, man. Gotcha. It was nothing, as ex nothing extreme. Okay. Just regular ball busting like we would do. Like when I came into the studio and off the, off the air, we were all busting each other's balls. Right. You know what I'm talking about. Gotcha. So, yeah, no, it was nothing crazy. You know, I didn't go in his house and just, like, take a dump on the floor or nothing like that. Yeah, thanks for the invite. No, I know, yeah, that would be... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was just regular. Right. A bunch of guys sitting around watching a fight with some beers, busting balls. Just regular shit. Nothing crazy. Well, I guess that you know carried. I mean? So then we, now we have a little bit of a backdrop. So he just, uh, he didn't like that. I don't like, I guess he didn't like the power dynamic at home. And uh, and like you said, he a PC move at work. So you got to give us, you got to keep us updated if that's the last of it. And we, we, we definitely oh, want to hear. Can I ask you a quick question before I go? Yeah, go ahead. Um, you know how you've had Chrissy Mayer on a couple times? Uh-huh. Is she coming back anytime soon? I, I well, I don't know. She's not on the she's not on the uh, the schedule uh, right now, but I'm sure she'll come back to hang oh, out. No, no, because no, because I got a question I wanted to ask her. It was nothing nothing crazy, nothing like that. Or maybe I could just ask it to you and you could forward it to her. Uh, well, can uh, I do that right now? Well, you you can e t tell me after the show. <laughs> What you want to ask when next time she's in, I'll write it down. I do that for people all the time. So you just tell me after the show. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll shoot you a text. You no, got it's it. just, yeah, yeah. It's nothing stupid or crazy or disgusting. You know what I mean? It's a regular question. Okay. Regular questions are great. Yeah, no doubt. Okay, well, great, man. I know you get nervous with me, Frankie. I, I do. I know you do. I do. And, right, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. I don't blame you for that. I know. We go back a long way. I have, a, I have there's a lot. Yes, <laughs> sir, we do. All right, man. Well, thanks for the call. All right. I love you, brother. All right. Take care. I love you, too. Be well. Yeah, I do. I do get nervous when it comes to him and guests. Yeah, me, I could, I could sit here and try to navigate through what could be a very sticky conversation at any moment. But uh, yeah, no. When I have there's imp when there's people in the room, like you know, if my my college history professor ever comes back, I would never take a call from King. If if, <laughs> if Professor Bowling ever came back to the studio, were you around last time he was here? Maybe why King called up or something. Yeah, he called up. So Professor Bowling, he's a, a he's a good friend of mine now. Lawson Bowling, teaching at uh, at my alma mater for decades. And he's a wonderfully, 
wonderfully educated guy. He's really fun to talk about sports history, uh, Roman history, American world history, Italy before 1865 or whatever the hell it was. I mean, he, he goes, he's great. So I brought him in a couple of times, and the last time he came here, I don't know, maybe about five years ago, something like that, I, four or five years ago, you lose track of people, especially when two and a half years, three years are taken completely off the docket with COVID. But we're still in touch. In fact, I, I sat down with him for lunch about two weeks before Aurora was born. I think that was the last time I saw him in person. But anyway, he's here, and we're talking about one thing or another, uh, maybe a little bit about Alexander Hamilton, uh, the gold back currencies, the World War II, all of that. Because he was a, he's a guy, I, the first class I ever took him, his was World War II. But after everything, and we're opening up the lines for calls, King calls in. And he starts, uh, he starts busting Lawson's balls. Like, like, like almost asking, like, who are you? To tell Frankie about anything, you know, like, 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 how dare you I was tell him about that? You were, yeah. Who are you to tell Frankie about anything? Well, uh, you, you, you know, show a little. He's telling him show a little respect. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen. If I was on the outside looking in, I would think that, oh man, this is this is hilarious. This is so awkward. Now I'm not on the outside. I'm on the inside. It was just a little, I just can't, uh, there's certain guests I just cannot let that happen anymore. Uh, I just don't know what to do. I guess not pick up the call just for that night. All right, let's see. Let us see. Yeah, you see they're putting out all these fucking things to say don't cook your chicken in NyQuil. Yes, it's a, it's a NyQuil chicken challenge. There's another challenge that's going around that uh, that is also equally deadly, and I forget what the hell it is. The suicide challenge. <laughs> it's the la uh, la latest. <laughs> See if you could screw up. Okay, hold on. Nyquil chicken TikTok challenge pulls Procter and Gamble back into a. Pro okay, here we go. Uh, this was a day ago. There's another one though. Kia Hyundai sued after viral TikTok causes rise in thefts. Blackout challenge. This is three weeks that's ago. That's it. That's the, the other one, one you were thinking of. What is that? I heard about that, but I don't know what it is. A blackout challenge. What do you black yourself out? Here's the first one. NyQuil chicken TikTok challenge pulls Procter and oh. Gamble back into social media chaos. FDA warning rekindles unsought coverage of the company. So, uh, you know, we're calling the Tide Pod challenge. So children... Keep going out there and, and eating laundry detergent and using NyQuil to baste chicken in, and things go wrong. And there's no, I mean, these are the same people who go after gun manufacturers when one of these kids, who are obviously unbalanced, goes and uses an indifferent tool, a weapon, a gun, to, to cause chaos and mayhem somewhere. They want, they want to go after the gun manufacturers because of the idiots that baste chicken in NyQuil and eat Tide Pods and take massive amounts of Ritalin. Who doesn't want their brand to become the focus of a viral TikTok video? Let's see, NyQuil, here's the NyQuil Sleepy Chicken Challenge. Sleepy chicken. NyQuil, Aunt, did you hear about this? No. Um, you we're, should do it. There's a couple of more of the challenges here. Uh, Where's Anthony? Hold on. There we go. Anthony, I'll put Anthony up there. Well, Nike, well, what? What about? It was Anthony's birthday on the 21st again, everybody. Remember that? There he is. He has his birth. He had his birthday. It's his birthday every 21st. Yep. That's right. Well, <laughs> here it is. Ready? NyQuil marinated chicken cooked in a skillet what? burst into mainstream news coverage on Tuesday following a food and drug advisory posted six days ago not to cook chicken in NyQuil for anyone who thought that might be a good idea. The FDA said the ingredients can be concentrated into dangerous, potentially toxic fumes in the process, though it did not cite reports of injuries or deaths. It's far from a new phenomenon. The idea of cooking chicken in NyQuil actually goes back to at least 2017. Uh, Where did this start? I don't I, know about I, that. There's a tweet from 2017. I they, think it goes back a little further than that. I think it was in like... 
1730s. The 1730s? What? Yeah. They're putting NyQuil on chicken since then. But a clearly satirical video in which a man cooks chicken in four third, four <coughs> three. What the hell is four three bottled of NyQuil? Four thirds. Yeah. Four thirds. Yeah. That's one and one third. It's not. You, you don't. You don't. The the. Uh, How much is that? That a lot. How many bottles? It's one and one third bottles. All right, so and, oh, yeah. let's see. He what? needs to put it. He's using I it as... I get the bottle of milk. Let's get the fucking <laughs> bottle in the fucking fridge. I look at the milk. It was black. That's fucking weird. And flips the meat with hair straightener. Has generated more than 4 million views on TikTok. Uh, for its part, NyQuil has been relatively mum on the subject. They should be. Stay away from it. But here's the other one. Another potential blackout challenge victim has died, this time in Scotland. This was on September 1st. What's a blackout challenge? You'll see. TikTok is no stranger to dangerous viral trends from dry scooping. What's dry scooping? It's when you... Dry scooping. Why experts warn against trying this viral TikTok trend? Dry scooping. Let's see. Uh, it's when you scoop up uh, poop. It's a caught after a fitness influencer suggested taking a scoop of pre-workout powder without diluting it with the water in order to maximize the effect of the amino acids, B vitamins, yeah. caffeine, creatine, and the supplement. Yeah. So you just like, what, try to swallow powder? Yeah, that doesn't work. Rich Piana used to snort you're gonna, it. You're going to have to... Uh, yeah, well, Rich Piana's dead. Yeah, he, he snorted it. But you're going to have to put water in your mouth to just... To get it down. Right. Anyway... That's dry scooping. Can you Climbing. smell protein powder? I'll give it a try. I'll let you know. Yeah, you let me know tomorrow. <laughs> can you eat protein powder? <laughs> snort it. You can, oh. you can snort anything that's in powder form. No, I mean, is it good for your health if you snort it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> it probably gets the protein in, in you quicker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the brain It quicker. gets in your system quicker. Uh, let's see. The blackout challenge has been around since at least 2008. Wait, 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 wait. There's more? Removing your own IUD, that was a challenge. Mm, IUD. Yeah, it's a it's the improvised explosive device women put inside their vaginas to prevent pregnancy. What the female condom? No, an IUD. It's an actual device that they put inside that that just like plugs them up. I don't know how it works, but it's yeah. You, you have yeah. to you have to get it changed. Um, I yeah. Uh, one of my exes had an IUD. That, well, so that was it. So you talk about people who are nuts. Remove your own IUD challenge. Fuck. Yeah, that's that's, that's crazy because you have to go to the doctor for that. Fuck. Yeah, it's a surgical procedure, pretty much. I mean, it's a very it's specialized. I mean, if you 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 pull that out wrong or whatever the hell you you can, you can probably cause infertility. You can screw up your. <laughs> you can probably cause internal bleeding. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I don't even have a vagina. Uh, I don't even have a vagina, and I know how bad yeah, it feels. Yeah, it just hurts. Yeah, imagine having an IUD in in your urethra. Did you know where I was going with that? That's just horrible. All right, let's see. What imagine we having your dick fall off. Anthony, you ever hear of necrotic penis? No. A necrotic penis is when you, you have an, uh, an, a, at least a, a series of infections and it just starts rotting uh, yeah. rotting right there and falling off. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, you get that's it from pissing in water. That's like, that's a nightmare right there. Yeah. That's like witnessing you die. Yeah. That's like you being a zombie, basically. We were talking about zombies tonight. Did you see those uh, videos of insects that have pretty much been almost completely hollowed out and eaten away where there's almost nothing left of them except like two limbs and parts of their face, but they're still walking around because a, a fungus has taken over their body in like some kind of a manual override? No. Yeah, it's nuts. Here, I'll play it one more time, then we'll get back to this this uh, pass out challenge. That sounds disturbing. Oh, it is very disturbing. I'll do the pass out challenge right now. Okay, hold on. I'll choke Let's myself. show Anthony. Hold on. This is a zombie insect. Yo. He's not Dude, alive, that. but incredibly. Watch the cicada. He's not dead either. Nobody. 
What the? Just ahead, only one wing, and he's crawling. It's a fucking zombie. The nervous system of these insects was manipulated by a silent killer. Radon. This cicada can't control its own body, which has already been taken over by another being. Although it's still alive, its organism is slowly being devoured. And here is the I can't, cult. I can't handle how gross this is. Like it's fucked up. How how like it, it makes me wanna scream. <laughs> <laughs> now, now imagine now, now that's I was asking now you think about everything we ever knew about zombies you know the, the even the just the the half rotting undead version of zombies it, it, if this is happening to insects is it not possible that's something well that's similar? what I'm yeah that's what I'm thinking I'm thinking that now it's like oh because zombies I always thought was some kind of like undead um, supernatural thing or, or something like that yeah, you know, and if this is the case, and and uh, some kind of fungus could hijack your nervous system and and, and use a uh, corpse, then my it's possible. Question, my the bigger question outside of is this possible for humans, which of course it is. I mean, uh, th this is a little bit more of a natural weird fungus related way for a, uh, a, a an <clears throat> organism to be taken over by something foreign and claim its life but claim all, you know take extinguish its life but claim its body but other than that the real question i had is is there some kind of a way to tap into the fungus hive mind network to control it or or is this just a Walk, just a fungus, just a you know, yeah, mindless, a mindless little thing. Like they walk in one direction until they hit a wall, and then they just keep walking. And there's there's no like oh, like 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 there's not like the not toy programmed. soldiers, yeah, right. yeah, like March of the Wooden Soldiers. You just wind them up and point them in a direction, you know. Or is it is there a way that this actually is can be uh, tapped into by some kind of sorcery? You know, zombies are usually controlled by something. All right, anyway, going back to this challenge. Let's see. Let's, let's see. hope not. Well, yeah, let's hope not. The Blackout Challenge has been around since at least 2008, according to People Magazine, but it started making the rounds on TikTok again back in 2021. What is old is new. Experts have warned young users not to try the trend, which has been linked to more than 80 deaths back when it was first emerged, per the CDC. Still, parents are struggling to find a way to stay on top of all the challenges that end up on their children's screens, and many of them are turning to TikTok for answers. It's really not TikTok's fault. I mean, this is these are just bored. Yeah, this was going on before TikTok. Remember that trend where the kids were lighting themselves on fire? Yeah, it's a fire challenge. It's, it's very serious, <laughs> but it's it's uh, simple. I mean, they don't they're not very creative. It's just the fire <clears throat> challenge. How long can you stand a blaze? How long can you stand there, set a blaze, soaked in alcohol, without freaking out and uh, and trying to put yourself out? I could probably last, I don't know, a minute. <laughs> if I I may be able to last an hour, just maybe, depending on what's on TV. There are much worse things in the fire challenge when you consider what's on television these days. What okay, is on television? So, what, oh, damn it. Where the hell is Yellowstone. it? Yellowstone. So where is it? The deaths are continued. Tell us what the the, the, the challenge is. What is the blackout you challenge? Black yourself out. I'll it's put a, myself in a sleeper hold right now. The choking. So I don't know if they have to put them their neck in a noose or something. Uh, it encourages users to hold their breath until they pass out due to lack of oxygen. What oh. is actually going on in the brain is lack of oxygen, similar to when a person is drowning, choking, or having cardiac arrest. Dr. Nick Flynn explained to the Irish Examiner, if you have low oxygen to the brain for over three minutes, you can get brain damage, and if you have low oxygen to the brain for over five minutes, it can result in death. There's divers that can hold their breath for several, Hours. several teen minutes. See, my, my question is, the, the thing that there's somebody who... I don't know. It took so much. There, it has to be a pride thing to actually even want to 
want to try to record yourself and outdo other people. Yeah, I'll outdo all of them. I'll hold my fucking breath the rest of my life, starting right now. That's what if you would be doing. If you can get some, uh, if you can get some viewership out of it, if you can get, if you can get TikTok famous out of it, then yeah, people are willing to do anything. I know. They're even willing to to go and uh, tell the world that they had an affair with uh, with with Adam Levine. <laughs> Oh, I saw a little <laughs> bit about that, too. <laughs> well, I, uh, let the, the lines are open, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take calls for around maybe five or ten more minutes, and then we're just going to take off for the night, cause I'll, and I'll save. I'll put all this on ice, the uh, the notes I had for the interview, and uh, and that's mm-hmm. and that's that's what we'll do. I did have one person get in touch with me about something that I want to I tell you. This was one email that was sent in from a viewer in Europe says hey Frank I saw my Dutch friend they were talking because we were talking about Ukraine last night we were reading from the Antonio Sochi book says hey Frank I saw my Dutch friend whose father was CIA he said that the Donbass region has 21 trillion dollars worth of precious metals and minerals which is why Poroshenko who preceded Zelensky on behalf of the globalists and NATO's interests started attacking and killing people there in 2015 who had Russian origins he and now Zelensky want to kick all these Russian loyalists out of Donbass so they can do as they wish with the treasures. $21 trillion. That, if, that's, uh, if there's any truth to that, we'll just put that on the record, then that, that would be... It belongs to Vladimir. Belongs in a museum. All right. 914-595-6953. And in the meantime, we're going to go over to the, the Babylon B. Actually, no, we're going to take a really quick break first. And when we come back, your calls, and we're off for the night. Off for the week. It's been a great time. Thank you, guys and gals, for sharing the time tonight and filling the gaps. We'll see you in just a moment. A guy on Twitter just revealed software that can take an Instagram photo and use AI to search open cameras in a location to see if they can find the video of you taking the photo on that day. So the guy who created Die With Me, which is that chat app you can only use when you have less than 5% battery, just unveiled this software where you give it like the Instagram photo on the left and on the right you see this AI searching through a bunch of open cameras all around the world to see if they can find the people in the photo with the proper location and give you the video of the photo actually being taken. I personally think this is brilliant. This must have been so hard to put together. The effect is fantastic, and it's a great way to remind people that you are constantly being watched, and so much more of your information is out there than you think. Also, it's way easier to find your location at all times than you think. Check out his Twitter. He's got a YouTube video on it if you want to learn more about it. He also has a way to support his page. But yeah, I think this is dope and terrifying. There are no strangers to love. Listen live or download it and take it with you wherever you go while you're driving, walking, working, or <laughs> you dirty dog. For all things, go to quitefrankly.tv. If you like what you see, become a sponsor. Quite Frankly streams live weekdays at 7 p.m. Eastern wherever you get your podcast. So for everything, it's quitefrankly.tv. Okay. So this is my promise okay. to the people of the video podcast network world. I will not eat a single morsel of food until Margaret Thatcher is dead and buried. She died three weeks ago. We'll be, we'll be right back with Larry King. It's in the crate! Where is it? It's in the crate! I didn't have it out to begin with. Where is the crate? It's not in here. It's not in here. It should be in the crate! It's not in the crate. I just told you that. God have a tent. She doesn't get her door. It's not in here. You left it at the hotel. You go back and you get her busy me. Go to the hotel and get busy me. Run, run, go. 
Mommy's getting your toy. Don't you worry. No, we just had a little, we had a little discussion. Look at me. Look at me. Don't look at anybody else. Don't look at the fat ass losers or freaks. You look at me! The number is 914-595-6953. We're going to be on for maybe about 10 more minutes. And then we're going to hightail it out of here. Big weekend um, for us. And I just want to take some calls and have a good time. Chad from Utah, you're on. What's going on? What's going on, Frankie, Anthony, Maddie? Hey, uh, bro. Hey, there's a, new, there's a new TikTok um, challenge out there. It's not very popular. Not very many people are digging on it very much. You heard of it? No, what is it? It's called Get a Fucking Job and Live Out of Your Fucking Mom's Basement, you fucking shit. <laughs> Sorry, Frank. No, no, no. I, I completely understand how you're feeling right now. It's okay. <laughs> That's great. Hey, well, I, I don't know. I only saw it the once, so I didn't I didn't get a chance to save it and forward it on. But fuck. I know. I know, and, and it's, it, it, here's the other thing: it's w- when they when they run out of creativity, where it's just, hey, hold your breath until you pass out. It's like, boy, hey, hold your breath until you fucking die, and the ambulance has to be called. Just, jeez, tell me. Anyway, Chad, anything for else you have? For the love of God. Anything else you have for this from this week? No, that was good. I enjoyed all week. It was good. It always is. All right, man. Well, I appreciate uh, ending the week with you. Have a good one. Thank you, Frankie. All right. See ya. See ya. Uh, Anthony, Matt, has anything been going on in your personal lives that you think would be uh, fun to talk about? Any any thoughts? Any foibles? Anything? Uh, uh, not really. No. I, I mean, just the usual. The Every, usual stuff. Business, business as usual. I will say that TikTok, um, you know, really has made a lot of losers think that they're important. Yeah, it's it, it's just because the algorithm is so generous to people and anyone can build a following. Anybody like who would never, who would never normally uh, have any kind of internet success, could suddenly blow up and they think that there's something way more important than they are. I've seen it so many times, and so many levels. Uh, the depression afterward must be just horrible. Well, it's it's really bad because the problem with that with with the TikTok is that what they'll do is they'll reward you. They'll reward one of your videos, and then I don't know I don't know how it really works because you can put out a, a video right afterwards and it'll get three hundred views. You can get a million views on one video. You put out another video, it gets three hundred views. It's 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 strange. Like even even after you gain a lot of followers, so I never really take it seriously. I've 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 doubled my followers on TikTok than I have on Instagram, way more th- than Instagram. You make money on TikTok? Uh, not me. But can you? I'm. I guess. Some people do. I guess some people do. Some people. Well, do. I don't know. I've never been on it. Well, I don't. I, I don't, the, I don't the know if there's. About. I don't know if the the because I I've downloaded <sighs> TikTok two or three times and deleted it within days after every every time. I just there's it's not for me. Whatever. But um, I, barely, yeah, I, I don't know if the, the platform is monetized or if people are just paid to hawk um, products and services. But there's always a way to monetize something if you have subscribership. You just It's either a personal plug or there is something built into the platform that is native. Right. That allows you to, to um, make some money. But I don't know. All right. 914-595-6953. Here is a... Here's some headlines from the Babylon Bee. You ready for this? First one up. In continued push... Let me get Matt out of the way here. Where are you at? Boom. In continued push for gender neutrality, Air Force removes all flight sticks from planes. <laughs> that's that's going to be a problem. Uh, White House promises to walk back Biden's statement once their code breakers decipher it. <laughs> Everything he does... Everything he does. Yeah, he's a fucking embarrassment. Uh, I just love s'mores, says woman who has apparently never tasted good food in her life. <laughs> she looks like she well, looks. She looks like she's having such a joyous time, though. Mm. I almost feel bad taking that away from her. 
White House staff to fit Joe Biden with a jingle bell collar <laughs> so they can find him when he wanders off. <laughs> there was that video again. Of what? Uh, I, I don't know where he was. I don't know if it was overseas or just at a, uh, you know, the formal th- something or other. But just wandering around a stage while uh, the next speaker is speaking, doesn't know where it went to. It was very weird. So still, the, the confusion shines through. Stacey Abrams claims obesity is just numbers manufactured by her bathroom scale. <laughs> I fucking hate her more than anyone. Yeah, well, you want to talk about this is the type of person in politics. Uh, Anthony just described being um, on TikTok mm-hmm. and having yeah. really, really nothing to offer the world, but the, the the algorithm swept them up, and and they they actually, it's that old that old saying about there are just some people on this planet who were born on third base and went their entire life thinking they hit a triple. Yeah. Well, obviously she was not born on yeah. third base, but she was placed on third base. She yeah, she's a giant phony. I could tell the phonies. Like I could tell when they talk. Like she's a phony. Let's take a call from Albert. What's going on, Albert? Hey Frank, how's it going? Oh, it's going all right. You know, the, the show I wrote did not become the show that we did, but uh, other than that, it's Friday. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the first time you handle it like a champ every time, and you always have an awesome show. That why the fuck you think everybody loves you, dude? G. Edward Griffin. Really? G. Edward Griffin. You did that. (laughs) How did you like it, man? Did you like it? I mean, the show's come a long way, dude. A long way. It's awesome. Um, But Angie Liberty, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta beat on you guys a little bit for that one. That dude that died with, uh, you know, it was like a with uh, your name on his dick or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was sad and everything, but I'm sitting here listening to you going, what the fuck? <laughs> if that was would have been my, those, I mean, for everyone that Angie knows, those were that dude's last words. I want to be that guy. Wait, I wait a second. Yeah, I, I, I didn't say guy. that. I didn't say that about the tattoo on the dick guy. Oh, I, well, I, it was I the cleavage. About, like it was sad. No, 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 no. Oh, the, it was oh, the cleavage. Okay. Well, you, the you remember that one? Was, was, yeah, yeah. That, I, it, it just sounded like me, to, like to me that that chick got a mastectomy and then they stuck her boob fat in a jar or something like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. I, that's yeah, that's, but that's the what the word cleavage being in there. It's like cleavage is the two things. It's in the middle. How do you get it in the jar? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Now, the, the, I got that, and when I left the studio last night, I, I saw text messages from. Mark Swan, I saw a text message from Abe, and they're like, cleavage, they're talking about they, they just removed a, a person's breast and put it into a, a pickle jar or whatever like that, and I'm saying, well, if that's the case, then 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 you removed the breast and you were stuffing a person's massive breast into a pickle jar afterwards, a formaldehyde, whatever the hell it is, but she used the word cleavage, which is cleavage, the, the right. cleavage is what is, a, is the effect that is created when two boobs are pressed together. So, or two ass cheeks. Yeah. Well, I guess ass cleavage, <laughs> and, and I just it just confused me. So I didn't know where to go with that. Right. I know. Oh, yeah. Anthony, somebody in the uh, chat wanted you to redo the Space Force uh, theme song because they said it sucks, and I just kind of responded. I was like, uh, Yeah, well, not a space agency is, you know, just Disney for adults anyway, so it's probably the way it should be. What is the Space Force Whatever theme song? Hold on, I'm I'm gonna play the Space Force theme song for him because I think as a as a uh, producer and a, and a songwriter, he's gonna. Oh yeah, this is it is it's is been, it an official theme song? Yeah, and it's been teared up. It's been teared apart by people. <laughs> yeah, this is real life. <laughs> military and non-military alike. Space Force theme song. The lyrics are the most ridiculous thing. They actually made up a word. They made up words for this thing it's called semper supra you ready for the oh wait no that's i just want the actual thing oh here we go all right you ready here the lyrics are on screen guys listen to this albert is that all you want to say no i wanted to also to just chime in one more thing before you do that is like i'm so disappointed sam triple didn't come but i'm sure he'll get back on another time because we were talking a lot about antarctica and the thing is is like I just think it's hilarious. I was actually born on the day that the forest all blew up, you know, or almost blew up. But um, 
Forrest all getting thrown out of the out, out of Bethesda, like you were talking about. Admiral Byrd dying shortly after, and then nobody's allowed to go to Antarctica. When when does that kind of stuff happen? It's like we're the only thing that's like 50 years nobody goes there, or, you know, 60, however many years since they came up with that. It's just the, the, the cognitive dissonance is just bewildering to me. But, you know, hey, I'm doing my chart, and, you know, that's what it is. Love the show. Love all you guys, Matt. Love you, and uh, have a great evening. I want to hear the, the lyrics because this is going to probably be awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, it will be. And thanks again for everything, Albert. It's great to hear you again. Same here. Have a, have a great evening. Bye-bye. All right. Later. You know, he's true. It, it, he's right about that, and it, it is very true. They got this international treaty in place uh, that was signed in, I think, just as the 60s rolled in, maybe 60, 61, 62, and where you need a petition from your home government or permission. You have to petition your home government for permission to travel there. Uh, there's all this red the red tape is so thick that even if you do cross all the t's and dot all the i's and and you make all of the environmental preparations you're not going to harm the environment there or not to mention raise money for the journey itself government they like ours they reserve the right to just say gtfo you're you're not going for no reason and in the in the crazy thing is that it's not even necessarily there being a treaty and restrictions on people to just go down and make landfall in Antarctica without permission first. You can't even sail past the 60th parallel legally. That's the weird thing. Even the 60th parallel, which, which makes me say to myself that all of the world powers, and I know some days are, you know, it's, it's hard to feel one way and you just start thinking about other stuff there too. And the, the, you know, the saber rattling in the media, we see Russia and NATO facing off right now. But when I look at, you know, re take another look at things like high jump and Antarctica, I start saying to myself, this seems Occam's razor says that all the world's sworn enemies, the superpowers, at least the tippy top of the superpowers that don't have anything to do with all of the, uh, the Broadway production that is everyday life for the rest of us. They have a very cozy joint operation down there, either with or without con- constant contact with other ancient civilizations, either interdimensionally or otherwise, and that the, whatever threat that was encountered by Admiral Byrd in 1947 still exists. That's what, I, that's what I say. That's what pops up for me when I think of the restrictions and things like that down there. Um, so... I don't know. Like I said, I, I, it's something I would love to have cracked open with Sam tonight, but uh, we'll see if it happens in the future. All right, Anthony, listen to this and read yeah, these, these terrible lyrics. Hold on. I'm picturing like... Oh, oh let's hear it. This is serious? That's serious. That wasn't written... It, it sounds like it was written by the people who composed the theme for Star Fox. Yes! <laughs> I know, yeah. But, like... Uh, so... I'm, like... I, I'm at a loss because I'm trying to think... Why did they choose to go, like, an old... Like, because thing? It, Because it's been so long since they added another official branch of the military that it would be weird for Evanescence to do their theme song. You right. know, it's, so they, 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 they tried to go marching band John Philip Sousa with it and to, to be able to just match the others, the, from the Coast Guard to the Marines and the Army and the Navy, Air Force. Um, and it just, it's, it's just, it, everybody has been l- l- ripping it. <laughs> Wherever it has been posted, like I said, military or civilian alike, it has just been laughed at. I wonder if they're going to keep it. Well, because it. I think, like, because what is the Space Force to begin with? Like, what exactly, what is this? 
what is the men in black or something like they should they should have had will smith do it I, I, <laughs> yeah. here comes the men in black. it should have been like the <laughs> wild wild west they should have done <laughs> like, just, I, just the two like, of what us the fuck? i i i just that's the thing every, every time for, from when i first heard about the space force i was like i just don't i'm so confused as to what it is yeah i know especially when you have to admit you have to think well air force uh, you're in the air. You're off the surface of the Earth. Wouldn't that just? Wouldn't that be counted nah, as high altitude? Can, no, because you're in a different dimension. We can have you know bases in space. So the space force, <laughs> we're gonna go to Mars. What they should have done. Go to here. fucking. We'll land on the sun. Here's all you need to know about space force. Here's all you need to know about space force. This is spaceforce.mil. United States Space Force, about, you go to About Us, and it says About Space Force, then right underneath it is a di is diversity. They want to let you know about how diverse Space Force is. You know what they should have done? What? They should have just had uh, the, the Space Force theme be What I've Done by Linkin Park. <laughs> exactly. What I've done. <laughs> it it should have been. <laughs> United States Space Force is a separate and distinct branch of the armed services organized under the Department of Air Force in a manner very similar to how Marine Corps is organized under the Department of Navy. I don't think it's the official. Maybe this isn't the official. Oh, this is the Air Force. They should have exaggerated the, the lyric. They should have exaggerated the lyrics for, you know, these aliens. They should have just talked about aliens. Um... Yeah, I, I I don't know. Let's go to the Wikipedia page. It's a branch of the armed forces, along with its sister branch, the U.S. Air Force. Space Force is part of the Department of the Air Force, one of the three civilian-led military departments within the, the Department of Defense. Space Force, through the Department of Air Force, is overseen... Okay, what does it do? It's the smallest yeah. U.S. armed service, consisting of about 8,400 military personnel huh. the space force operates 77 spacecraft in total across various programs such as gps space force military satellite communications blah blah what is it doing yeah we need it to be able to kill uh aliens because whatever the fuck is out there in space shouldn't have been on our land before we got there well you know uh there's a lot of speculation you want to talk about you want to talk about antarctica antarctica th there's this all connects to Space Force and NASA and what the hell is the moon, what's going on in the moon. Um, people, uh, there's, there's a lot. There, there are people that say that we have been on the, on the moon, that Aryans, that the Nazis have been up on the moon on, on rear end dark side of the moon bases since yeah. before the Second World War ended. Yeah, maybe Hitler is there. He's still alive. Maybe we can get him for an interview on this show. <laughs> well, I mean, that's one way of blowing your show up. That, uh, yeah. Can you imagine? You're the only show that that got to interview Hitler. I mean, that's if 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 we were able to confirm that he was alive on the moon somewhere, and that for some reason he agreed to do this show, how much attention do you think we would get? You'd probably get arrested. You'd probably call. They'd look into you. They'd oh, like, look, yeah, he's they'd... going on a far right Trump. Staunch Trump supporter podcast. That would be, that would be hard. Extremely harsh. right leaning. You're right. I, I'd have to. I'd have to. There's a sidekick on Friday that, well, that smokes you, grass. That would be one of the. See, yeah, that'd be a. Da I think it'd be dangerous. That'd be a dangerous thing for anybody. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I could do that. I yeah. would do it. You just write down the the question. Because if that I, was I actually, because if that was actually it. true, you're talking like now. You're you're talking like, like. Uh, Secrets that are being uncovered, type <laughs> stuff. If you have that kind of information and access, oh yeah, they're gonna they're gonna first. Come. First and foremost, how did how did how did Frank, from quite frankly, confirm that that Al was alive, and he was living on the backside Al. of the moon? That's it, that's what Matt calls uh, Adolf. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's Al. <laughs> You know, it'd be funny if like if that happened and what the, f the entire world was like like in love with him after that because of his golden tongue. <laughs> hey, you know, if you if, if we sit down, we sit down with Adolf Hitler. He's he's sitting over there where Anthony's sitting, and Anthony's sitting on the uh, is on he's on the couch, <laughs> and I just we just lean at one of us. I don't know. We just lean into the the microphone a little bit. We look over and we go so. 
Why'd you do it? <laughs> <laughs> That's just how we just just let's just tear, let's just tear the bandaid off here. Why, why'd you do it? <coughs> oh man, you could have gone so many different ways. You decided to go that way. Uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, well Adolf Hitler, it, it's probably alive because he 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 was a, a patron. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of he was one of Anthony's patrons. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Wait. Oh, oh, I had to show this. But can I show the picture, Anthony? Yeah, yeah show the picture. Because, th okay, th this is... The pro so so you, you can go ahead. You can tell the... the oh, hold on. What do you want me to tell? I mean, I, I'll, I'll jump in once I get all the, the pictures ready. You can, you can start. Okay, well, basically, long story short, on one of my videos, uh, the, and it, it was a, one of my patrons on Patreon... Uh, I used to have an end scroll. I used to have a scroll of all my Patreon. I don't do it anymore. Because of this. It's not because of this. It's actually not because of this. I just stopped doing it. Um, but one of the uh, <laughs> patrons, they they would what they would do is they they would list their names and stuff for the end scroll, and I would just take it. I I'd, I'd go and copy and paste and give it to my uh, editor, and he'd put it in the end scroll and stuff, and he. He didn't see it. I didn't see it. But somebody put Adolf Hitler in there. <laughs> okay. Now, okay. He, now here is the, here is the here. It is, I'm going to put it up on screen. This is and the funny thing about this is especially how we screenshotted your face. It al <laughs> it almost looks like you, you you know something's wrong. Hold on, wait. So <laughs> so you see it, Adolf Hitler. And there's Anthony thanking everybody. <laughs> Now, now the thing about this that's funny. When, okay. did, when, when did you know? Now, who who pointed out to you? When did okay. you notice it? It was in the comments. Someone says, "What?" Well, <laughs> somebody <laughs> said, uh, <laughs> "Oh yeah, yeah." I think it was the comment. It's like, I can't, I can't, "Hold on a minute. Wait a minute." Someone said, "Like." Uh, well, I goes. Oh, well, well, I ate off Hitler's in your Patreon. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, this like, is this is like, what, what's so funny to me that uh, this is how you fit. It obviously just went past you too, but then you go back to your video editor at the time, who's who, Jewish. Who's Jewish? Yeah, I said, dude, how did you not see this? And he goes, oh, I'm sorry. You know, he's like. <laughs> He wasn't offended or anything. He was just like, you know, he just he didn't see it. <laughs> How did you not see this? Um, and so what we did was we we uh, there is a an option that you can blotch out the whole thing. Uh, you can blot. So like if you go to that video, you can see, you will see like a a you'll see pixels scrolling up, but there is one frame I think that that we couldn't get it perfect. That that if you if you stop it in a certain area you'll you, you can still see it. Do do you want to mention what video it was? It doesn't matter. I mean, like, well, yeah, but who cares? Who cares? It's, it's the uh, it's uh, a <laughs> careless whisper, careless, careless whisper, whisper uh, in the style of disturbed, and that's the other thing too. Disturbed, David Draymond is is a he's Jewish. Yeah, you all, know, all of a sudden, this very like, pro Israel. You know, he's like he's he's like really into into that stuff. So um, uh, <laughs> that was another thing. I was like, yo, we can't have this. <laughs> we can't, you know? no, the, and then when you, and then you had to make some kind of an address to you, you address your patrons. I, I said something. Yeah, something. I I made a just a statement about it on Patreon, but I, I don't. Okay, never mind. I it was yeah. It, it's a it was. It was just damage, damage control. Right. I had to. Right. I, oh, I know. I know the world we live in. And I was, I was pissed off because you know, like you know, <laughs> you put me, this son of a bitch who did this, put me in a real <laughs> fucking position. I don't like being in these fucking positions. Okay. The best thing is, the best thing is, this kid, whoever it was, became a patron of yours for like one dollar, and it was a normal name, and then. Switched his <laughs> switched his split because because if you saw Adolf Hitler pop up as a new patron, you'd be able to, right there to reject reject the sponsorship. So they, it they, wasn't the name. See, they they everyone got to put the name. They, everyone got to put who they wanted, what what they wanted to be called in there. 
It wasn't like, you know, oh, go and comment and I'm going to take your username. Oh, comment with they, they commented with with what they wanted to be listed as. So but that means you would have to individually grab Adolf Hitler. Yeah, but no, the way that we did it was like I I highlighted everything. Okay. Copied it, pasted it, and then I just said, yeah, uh told Andy to um my editor to take out the the actual screen name. Gotcha. And then leave the uh, you know, the Adolf Hitler right in front of his face that he didn't see. I, well, I gotta say, this is uh, th- that's one of my one of my favorite stories. It really is one of my favorite stories. But when it comes to this and our work, and come to think of it, I shouldn't have addressed it at all because, like, really, no one would have ever like. There was only a couple of people who noticed it. Yeah, the frantic nature of the cover up because of the name. These two words, it, it, it's just a like, quirk. It, it's, it's like DefCon One. We've got to get this name down. When I, I, when I think back to it, it really, like, it wasn't, um, d- no one would, really would have noticed it. I mean, obviously, I, I, I had, at that point, if you notice it, you have to take it down. Well, I, I want, because I don't want any, any bullshit, but it's not like I was, you know. Running. Well, no, you, you know what good. it is? Because, like, because, because it, it you know you know what I'm talking about. It's just like obviously that was somebody who was trolling and I, I was pissed off. I was pissed it off when someone got uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> got me it, like that. They did this to me. How dare you get me? But anyway, uh we actually made it to nine o'clock. I was just gonna get off at, at eight forty five, but Anthony showed up and we had a good time here. I just released all the the gold pills to everybody. But listen, f- uh Friday night uh, Friday night uh programming on quite frankly T V has not been canceled. In fact, it's going to be even more enriched tonight because we got the weekend roundup coming up next. And Abe and Cody will probably be going live a couple of times for the Where's Frank, the Quite Frankless live show tonight. So as you're watching this uh, fun, great, great mix of content that's been curated for you on Quite Frankly TV, there's also going to be spots of live interactive. A moments there reading gold pills talking to the chat covering one story or another sometimes related to the show sometimes not uh, we've been testing this this is now two weekends in a row on Sunday night uh, I will put up my usual Sunday night programming starting around 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern time and that'll go deep into the evening as well so I hope that you do not leave me completely out of your weekend plans when you come home and you're relaxing obviously you're going out for dinner and drinks you go and enjoy yourself but you know I'll be right where you left me and I'll see you on Monday ladies and gentlemen for a great engagement with uh, Rich Barris as he comes back oh one last thing let me make sure I got all of the super chats real quick because you just don't know summer 711 says Frank oh wait that's before I think that's from before my bad and that is still the last one so there you go thank you guys and gals I will see you tomorrow on Rockfin. I have a couple of tips whoa let me make sure I didn't uh, run over this retrograde Pisco Left a very nice tip. Thank you so much. And Bad Andy says, oh, hey, make money on TikTok, man. Okay, so somebody just gave me a, a TikTok link. Now I'm going to start making money on TikTok. That's something I'll, I'll start this weekend. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And we will see you. We'll see you soon. I'll catch you on the flip side. Quite frankly, is film before a live studio audience, and now our super chatters, starting with Summer Seven One One and Stostu over on everywhere else. Thank you to people on Rockfin and on Quite Frankly TV. I will be joining you guys and gals soon. Make yourself comfortable. It is the weekend. <laughs>